Hello, my name's Randy. And I have a problem. Are you dead right now? Hey, this is Nick Bate. And Much a mixture of comedy and horror. <laughs> yeah, I have a problem. It's safe to say that at this point, we all know what a lol cow is. And for most of us, we have our favorites who we keep tabs on and enjoy watching like they're our own personal Truman Show. And when it comes to lol cows, there really is no shortage to choose from. Whether you enjoy the Canadian horror show of Foodie Beauty, I offered him foreplay if he would come over and bring me a um, couple of whoppers. The decade-long degradation of the goth wizard of Wyoming. It's pissing me off! It pisses me off! Or the life-spanning tale of our CPU goddess Chris Chan. And for God's sake, stay away from that Psychopedia Dramatica page. There are plenty of options to choose from, with a variety of things that make each of these exceptional individuals interesting in their own right. But on the other side of the coin, we do have the lesser known and lesser talked about phenomenon of horror cows. <laughs> I hope you all fucking die! And while those who know what I'm talking about are probably dreading the territory we're about to embark on, to those who don't, they are the twisted and disturbing end of the lol cow spectrum. Individuals who cross the line from exceptional to demented. Horror cow. A lol cow that is primarily known for their disgusting and or creepy behavior. Horror cows may typically be known for one or multiple of the following. Pedophile, zoophile, necrophile, corpophile, exceptionally violent behavior, excessive attention seeking, displays and or disgusting, creepy and or horrifying behaviors. Abusers, groomers, and even killers, horror cows are the individuals who were once noticed for their odd and funny behavior that later showed their true and repugnant colors, either with their disgusting desires or tragically horrific actions. And the worst part about them is that they often show signs well before anything actually comes to fruition, in some cases straight up telling you just what evils they'll commit long before they ever act, only to be ignored until it's too late. While some end up being absolute curveballs like the earth-shattering tragedy of Barbara Chandler, some others were right in the open, long before anyone took any action. But you know what? Maybe we should look at some examples. Maybe we need to get to know just what a horror cow is, and how bad things can really get. Everybody who survives this! We get to meet their we get to meet their favorite superheroes among others among others and everything. Uh, but yes, there are those are going to survive and those are not going to survive. But aside from that, the decision is definitely supported by me, but uh, also gonna be made in part by your goddess of this earth. You might be asking why I'm lumping good old Chris here, and the fact is, Chris Chan entered the realm of horror cow when they committed the unforgivable sin of Sigmund Freud's wet dreams back in 2021. Why did you interrupt my video, Barbara? They're quite honestly the best and most blatant example of when someone crosses that line. If you're a viewer who has no idea who Chris is, well, there's simply far too much to go into, and you're gonna have to sit through Geno Samuel's endless documentary. But the gist is, Chris is probably the most documented person in history. With their odd life being obsessively cataloged since the early 2000s, and symbiotically fueled by their insistence on sharing every single aspect of their life with the internet at large. I was cyber boy since 2007. Think I'd let that stop me? In turn, they're relentlessly tormented and trolled for this, and as their mental health has continually declined, so has their grasp on reality. A lot of the lingo and slang around lolcows comes from their story, 
one that started as them just being a high-functioning autistic man who wanted to find a boyfriend-free girl and write their god-awful comic Sonichu, slowly spiraling over the years into the physical and mental degradation with Chris falling deeper and deeper into delusion and insanity. Ugh, cause who knew I would have- I actually am destined. And with the ancient prophecy of C-197 and everything that I am literally half Sonichu and I soon will be able to transform into my Sonichu form. This alone would be enough to raise red flags of the direction that things were going. But what makes this all that much worse was the sexual frustration and overall creepiness that had been around since the beginning. Chris Chan's love quest is synonymous with them. While it was hilarious to joke about and laugh at at the time, given how things have played out, we really should have seen it as a bit of a warning sign. Chris has always been a gullible and eager individual, but as the delusions and mental illness started to ramp up, it became an inevitable recipe for disaster. And from here, we get Isabel Janky. Or, like, but at the convention, make sure to have uh, a lot of fun with, you know, make sure to have a, you know, push her with the have a lot of fun with her, right? Because, um, Obviously. yeah, because now you're doing this for your mom, yeah, uh, make sure, I'll be there, I'll be there watching you guys, making sure that nobody is trying to, <coughs> sorry, my throat, <coughs> nobody's trying to hurt you, do anything, I'll take photos of you too. Isabel was a troll who wanted to end all trolls. Hi, Chris. It's Bella. With this push, sexual frustration, and delusions of being a goddess, Chris did the unspeakable. He fucked his dementia-ridden mother. And while there are plenty of jokes I could make, I just don't think it would be appropriate in this case. And for anyone who has followed the prison arc, you know Chris has shown zero remorse or regret for his actions, and in some cases, even showed contempt for Barb, refusing to acknowledge what he did is wrong or even remotely bad. And if you think this is all messed up and disgusting, well, strap yourselves in, because it only gets worse from here. Chris might have done the unspeakable, but he is far from how dark the abyss can get. If you think your friends are safe on the internet, Let's just say that uh, NSP will get your fucking... In he already got your information, and now he's going to get Boone's info. So I'd really, I really suggest you tell Boone to take those videos down. Or pretty much, let's just say you're not going to be safe online. Now, our boy Jonathan Ross is a much more niche subject. But for anyone who used to watch internet blood sports, or was a big fan of Jim, you probably are very aware of who this individual is. Ross first became known in the at the time small community of DSP trolls, in particular, getting into online spats and quote unquote debates with members of the podcast Sons of Kojima. What is it about Fred that you have such a big issues with? Anything. Just tell me anything. I want to know since we're talking. Um, that, um, uh, Fred, um, uh, Fred Fox has, um, uh, like, like, Fred Fox, um, uh, basically, um, uh, <sighs> oh, is that what it is? At first glance, he was just some spurgy YouTube bottom feeder who couldn't speak a coherent sentence without and the mo first of all basically um, uh, I have to say is that I'm um, uh, I don't know first of all um, uh, how come like I'm um, a uh... and would routinely make an ass of himself in the process he quickly became a target of Kiwi Farms and would be documented and trolled by those interested in the newfound lol cow who was just at the time beginning to emerge his awful rap songs. Every single time I go on the block end, I go and get my clock end. I shoot a ginger's head off with my clock end. The cops are coming after me and I run and. Terrible YouTube videos. My, my, my uh, videos 
are like ignored for some reason. An absolute spurg out is what initially made up the majority of interest people had in him. But I'm sure as you can guess, if that's all there was to it, then we wouldn't be talking about any of this. Yeah, but you could say I'm a pedophile all you want, but I'm not a pedophile. Have, have you talked Dude. to Rex lately? Yeah, I have. But how the fuck is looking that shit up not messed up? Dude, you fucking... Dude, looking up kids in the bathtub isn't fucking pedophile. The only reason why it's if you jerk off to it. I didn't even jerk off to it at all. Ross admitted to some pretty questionable and greasy behavior, quickly shifting the tone of people's interest in him. While this happened, he also had leaked calls get posted where he would scream at his grandmother and it would be known just how dirty and repulsive he physically smelled. Take a shower. Clean up. Stink. Not clean underwear. Put on some clean clothes once in a while. Jesus Christ. I'd like you to wash your hair and put some soap under your armpits. Yeah, and then I'll decide what to do until then. People around you will thank you. Going on to admit the fact that he had shit himself up until the age of 12. Uh, do naked Jim kids asked, get uh, your dick Ross, rock hard? Or you only mentioned on a previous stock? live stream that you used to shit yourself up to the age of 11. Did you wear diapers up until then or just at 5? Pretty much, uh, I actually, actually, to be honest, I, was, I stopped wearing pull-ups when I was 12. All this is incredibly suspect, and anyone who has delved into true crime knows just how concerning all these behaviors are. Ross here, Ross is what we call a, he's a gem. He's a diamond in the rough. He just needs to be polished a little until you've got a nice, giant, 19-carat piece of autism that you can slap on a ring and give to the girl that you love. And once Mr. Medicare got involved and egged Ross on, it would cause all the dirt to bubble up to the surface. Ross would admit to being a pedophile. I tried hiding that for the longest time, but you know, I guess I failed to do that. Oh well. Are you admitting it now? Yeah, I am. I tried hiding it, but you know, I failed to do so. I failed to, I failed to, I failed to lie to people and I failed to hide it. So there you go. What were you lying about? Why did you want to lie? Why did you want to cover it up? Why were you lying? Because pretty much I just didn't want to face that part of myself. It's borderline. There you go. Admit to having violent sexual fantasies. Like, well, I mean, like a girl people. about having rape fantasies about, like, I don't know, really. I mean, I already, like, moved on from her, but, like, then again, like, you know, fucking, like, my, I, it's my ex-girlfriend, and it's, like, fucking, like, how, like, you know, just, like, holy water or something like that whenever like i whenever like or like sunlight or something like that like whenever you just look at her you just feel like you want to rip her and that's your weakness and his need to share his thoughts and opinions about pedophilia would only ramp up he would proceed to put out death threats dox people and go into screams and rage about the violent things he wanted to do to children. This culminated in one of the darkest yet most hilarious arcs for Mr. Medicker, and would end with Ross eventually being pulled off the internet. With his legacy being that of one of the most unhinged people to ever disgrace the World Wide Web. And while he has never been confirmed to have committed anything too atrocious, the implication of what could have happened and his unrelenting need to express his degenerate and predatory desires left a lot of us aware of just what could have happened. In the words of a wheelchair-bound opiate addict, Dude, if he had more brains, he would be really fucking dangerous. While Ross didn't cross the line as hard as Chris Chan had with his actions, what makes him far worse is the possibility of just what he could have done if he wasn't brought to the greater attention of the internet by Jim.
one butthole sits in the farthest corner of a room talking to a microphone and trying not to laugh about stupid things. Butthole, 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 butthole. Big, hairy, oily, scary butthole. Randy's stare is one of the simultaneously darkest and most hilarious characters that the internet has ever seen and single-handedly encapsulates what a sport will look like in the age of social media. The man is honestly a really twisted joke brought to life. Randy would come to prominence in 2017 thanks to his horrific act of violence. Immortalized as a Columbine copycat who idolized Eric and Dylan, attempting this by taking the lives of his co-workers before proceeding to turn the weapon himself. But that's where most people's knowledge of Randy tends to end, portraying him as just an unhinged criminal. Maybe they vaguely know about the EGS, aka the god-awful flash show that he made about Danny Phantom, but other than that, there really isn't anything here that could make him be seen as a lull or even a horror cow. But that's only if you stopped your dive at Randy on the surface. The twisted reality is that Randy was a terminally online attention whore who wanted nothing more than to find the fame and fortune YouTube once offered. His legacy spans a damn near decade, creating various forms of different kinds of content. From ripping off the AVGN's bullshit series, You know what sucks? Everything in your house past midnight. Attempting to mimic Make Me Bad's spastic toy skits. Don't you fucking say it! I can't hide! I can't hide! I can't hide! To emulating Jackass. Elka Seltzer, round two. Prove it. So that's what she said. That's what Hessel said. And terrible vlogs. Just just know that I do like even like the people I've had arguments with or people I've had I've blocked over the years and all that stuff. Just just know that I still truly appreciate everyone who has supported my channel. Randy tried everything, but never found the success he was looking for. He really was an extremely odd individual, and you don't even have to look further than his public videos to see this. He always spoke and acted with an awkward and almost alien demeanor, showing a complete lack of social awareness. But it's the behind the scenes stuff that really shows off how twisted and warped his mind actually was. The day of his massacre, Randy would release his infamous video depicting what he wanted to do and would also upload a massive archive of journals and vlogs where he depicted his life story and what led up to his actions. There is a clear hatred for his parents for not accepting or understanding him for who he felt he was. I'm your fucking kid and you don't know anything about me. You don't know how I truly feel about anything and I can't tell you that stuff. And then all he fucking seemed to care about was like me getting a full-time job and making money and then trying to move out of the fucking house and start my own life and all this shit, which I knew I, never, I was never going to do. It's all about money, isn't it? And guess what? Money's fucking worthless. Drop dead. And again, despite the goofy fucking Ember's Ghost Squad show, He wouldn't be all that different from other mentally ill criminals, but this is where he becomes a horror cow. Like if you look on the poster behind me, those were inspired by Ember McLean, which is a ghost from a TV show called Danny Phantom, which started back in 2003, 2004. You know, I was in late elementary school at that time. But this ghost, this woman always connected with me. Ever since I first saw her, it just, something changed. It was like a spark and it just connected with me it made me feel warm inside and it felt very familiar which was strange it was like i'd seen her before but at the time it was a brand new show and nothing had ever been done like that before with that type of character like you never saw that character anywhere else except that show and um i just grew attached to her unlike anything i ever have in my life randy was consumed and obsessed with ember mclean Going as far as trying to dress as her. Like, stain on the floor, like that splotch you'll see on my carpet. 
That was an ember thing. I just, I wanted to make my skin as white as possible to look like her. I wanted it to be completely white, so I bought this, this body paint, which was like, I don't even know what it was. It was like latex shit that like, it becomes like glued to your skin and you gotta peel it off. And it got on the carpet and then it got freaking in my body hair, which like almost never came out at the time. And later coming to the conclusion that he wasn't actually meant to be a man or even a human. He was turned on by ghosts and wanted not only to fuck them, but eventually become one. I wasn't turned on by dead people or corpses or anything like that. I was attracted to ghosts, yeah. I wore girl clothes, the more I felt like that was who I was. Like I felt like I was a girl and I found out that I was. I was never meant to be a guy. I was just a female soul trapped in a man's body my whole life. Every three days since like 2016, I've been shaving my arms and legs and entire body every three days. You wonder what I'm doing in the shower for so damn long? I'm shaving my entire fucking body. I wasn't jerking off in there. <laughs> but nobody ever questioned that, which I don't know why. <laughs> I hid it for the longest time. I, I kept the, the girl razor in my freaking desk over there. And I just got tired of hiding it. I'm like, well, they're going to have to eventually know anyway. So I just started leaving it on the counter. But nobody questioned it, which I couldn't believe. That shocked me. As time went on, I thought like Rachel. Like I thought my name was always Rachel. But I don't know. But that's when that started. And that was the lead character for EGS. Me. Add on to the fact that he had very rough gender dysphoria. And sure, maybe there's been some trans people or those who have struggled with gender dysphoria who have had their awakening in odd and funny ways. But the difference here is that Randy didn't feel the need to maybe present himself as the gender he felt he was or seek therapy or even hormone replacement therapy. Rather, Randy decided to fucking kill people. He believed that if he committed a massacre, Believing that if he had done so, he would be reborn as a Danny Phantom ghost girl. And I'm not even fucking kidding here. This disgusting piece of shit went from just a mentally ill and sympathetic character to a complete schizoid insane sped the second he decided the best way to handle his problem was to live out his last days orchestrating and acting out his magical all in his own attempt to obtain his ghost pussy. And this alone has tarnished his legacy so much that Randy was never even seen as a lol cow. He was unknown during his time on God's green earth, but he became one after he was six feet deep. Randy has to be one of the only people to have ever become a horror cow after they passed away. And rather than his legacy being that of his Columbine idols or seen as a martyr for the misfits and the mentally ill, he sits at the same table as Chris Chan, Jonathan Ross, and Nick Bit. Uh, fuck. We have to talk about Nick Bates, don't we? Our last stop on today's tour of terrifying bovines is none other than Nick Bates. Nick is one of the most infamous horror cows to ever disgrace the internet. And while he's nowhere near as popular as most lull cows such as Cyrax, Chris Chan, King Cobra, or literally anybody else, he's one that lives rent free in the minds of those who do know him. And that's because this man is horrifying. You might be thinking, dude, you literally just talked about a psycho who killed people. How much worse can it get? And the simple answer is, Randy at least preyed on adults. Nick Bates is a vile piece of shit who indulged in pedophilia and corporate and worst of all, inflicted those desires on his seven-year-old sister. There is no joke to be made here. I'm not even going to punch at this person because they don't even deserve that. Nick started off as an online lol cow because he was a weird little fucker who talked like a South Park Canadian, had a bizarre obsession with feces, and looked like a fucking abomination. He was essentially a discount bargain bin Chris Chan, 
Except this one liked playing with shit. Hell, they won't even let him pursue the things that he wants to pursue. Like making a flash game where you gobble up shit that falls from the sky. Or having a bonding ritual where you shove the feces of another person up your anus and then have them take your feces and shove it up their anus. But his odd and disgusting behaviors, his horrifying room, his god-awful music, if you can even call it that. No way! Anally children and disemboweling and force feeding them their own intestines. And the arc of him stalking his online friend were all mostly in line with what other lol cows were like, at least a more extreme version of them. And again, if it was just this, he'd just be seen as a odd, creepy, and kind of morbidly hilarious character. But what really makes Nick Bates terrifying and tragic is the fact that he spent years shouting from the rooftops, posting anywhere he could about his disgusting and horrific interest in children. He would post about it constantly, out himself constantly, and defend it constantly. But people just seemed to ignore it, thinking it was just an act, just somebody online seeking attention by being the edgiest person alive. But the sad reality is that this would end with his little sister going to the police and Nick being thrown in prison. His prison sentence not being the sad part. The sad part is the severity of crimes he committed against his own child sister. Not just stopping at normal essay or abuse, but forcing her to eat shit and continually victimizing her. The things that this man did are unspeakable, and he really should be fed to a pack of hungry dogs. But the worst part about it is that after this story broke, people still didn't listen. Much like other human garbage, such as Amos Yi and Jessica Yaniv, people would just watch these people out themselves for years, and yet all of them would ultimately be ignored or entertained as just simply funny and odd people rather than the actual monsters that they were telling you they were. So before we end the video, let me just say this. Laughing at morons on the internet and milking lol cows is all good fun, but remember to look at the signs that these people show, because none of these horror cows mentioned here were a surprise. So